Everyone thinks that editing 360 video requires special skills, but it doesn't. The problem is simply knowing where to start. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact four editing tools inside the Insta360 app that beginners should use first. And I'm gonna show you these in the right order so your first edits actually look good without wasting hours of time. So let's start with the one that the app clearly wants you to tap first, this bright yellow box, Auto Edit. And this is actually a really good place to start for beginners anyway, as long as you don't just throw in there all of your holiday footage. So here's what I want you to do. Tap Auto Edit and then start selecting your clips. And as you add them, watch the total time at the bottom of the screen. For your first few edits, keep that total under say 10 minutes of footage. And remember, this isn't the total length of the final video. This is just the total length of all the footage that you're importing. So this will just keep things manageable for the app and also manageable for your brain. Once you're happy with the clips you've chosen, tap next and then just let the app do its thing. It will find interesting highlights and then build a complete edit for you. And with around 10 minutes of footage, it will usually give you a completed video in less than a minute. Now this is where you can start to have a bit of a play with the footage. So along the bottom, you'll see a row of templates. And if you tap one, it instantly rebuilds the edit with different pacing, different transitions and music. And to make this choice easier, you can use the categories underneath. So travel, vlog, moto, sport, and that kind of thing. So this is just to narrow the style down to what you're actually shooting. And before you export it, there are two really simple settings that you may need to change. The first is aspect ratio. So by default, it's nine by 16, which is vertical, and this fills your phone screen and is perfect for Instagram Reels, as well as TikTok and YouTube Shorts. If you want a landscape video for YouTube, tap the nine by 16 icon in the top right and switch it to 16 nine. And the second thing is the length of the finished video. If you tap footage length, you can tell the app to give you a 30 second version, or you can stretch it out to one, two or three minutes. Personally, I'd recommend shorter because shorter edits are just much nicer to watch. And they stop you boring your friends with 10 minutes footage of you walking around a town. If you change the length annoyingly, the software then dumps you into a more complicated screen. But don't panic, just hit switch template and this takes you straight back to where we were, the simple view that we want to stick with for now. So once you're comfortable with that feature, the next easy editing option to try is flash cut. Flash cut is brilliant if you've got one really nice clip or a handful of clips and you just want the app to make something really cool out of them without you having to think too much about it. So select flash cut and then you need to select the 360 tab and you'll see loads of templates. Each template tells you how many clips it needs. So some only need one, whereas others might need three, five, eight, even 10. Don't get hung up on the names here. If something says it's for motorbikes, you can still use it for your day at the beach or a walk through a town. So think about the label here as being more about the energy level rather than the subject matter. So once you've picked the look that you like, drop your clips into the slots that it asks for and then the app does the rest. It automatically reframes the 360 footage, it adds music, adds effects and cuts everything together. This is a really nice way, especially for beginners, just to see how much potential there is and how much can be achieved with one 360 clip. You're not touching a timeline, you're not keyframing anything, but the results of using just that one clip feels like a finished video rather than just raw footage. Once you've finished playing with the single clip options, then you'll want to experiment with multiple clips. So these are the three templates that allow you to add most clips. Time Warp Montage has eight clips, the Gift of Time and Big Well Tiny Planet has nine clip slots and Full On Moto Madness has 10 clip slots. And again, just to reiterate, ignore the names here. Just because it says Moto Madness, you can use this for any type of clips. Now the next two editing options are still easy, but they do ask a little bit more from you, not in the editing process, but in terms of the shooting and the planning. The first one of those is Shot Lab. So think of Shot Lab as a library of effect shots. And don't just think about gimmicks here when we talk about effect shots. There is something in here for everyone. So when you tap into Shot Lab and look through the effects, each one tells you exactly what you need. How many clips, roughly how long they should be, and whether you need to hold the selfie stick, where to position it, and whether you'll need a tripod. So with Shot Lab, there's a little bit more to think about before you press record. 
So you choose the effect you want first, you then follow the online prompts to shoot it properly, and then once you've filmed your clips, you come back into ShotLab, you select that same effect, you import your footage, and then the app processes the whole thing for you. The actual editing of these effects is pretty much done for you, so the only real work goes into the process in filming them. I'm not going to go through every effect in here because there are loads, but I am going to talk about a few of my favourites I recommend. So the two I use the most are cine laps and fly laps. These are perfect for longer walking shots where you want to show off a town or a place you're exploring. You're just walking normally, but the end result is this really nice sped up stylish sequence of your holiday or city footage without it being a pain to shoot. Another one I really like, which is a little bit more on the gimmicky side, but in a good way, is stop motion. It's very easy to shoot and the app does the clever stuff and the final result looks like you've spent ages in an editing program. For more cinematic movement, Horizon Flip works really well. It's great for driving, biking, scooter shots, anything where you're moving forwards and you want that big dramatic roll of the horizon. So they're my favourites, but if you're wondering where to start with Shot Lab, then Rolling Planet is one of the classics. It's the kind of shot that most people imagine when you talk about 360 cameras and tiny planets. And the nice thing here is that you can often reuse the same clip for other effects like Parallel Planet and Clone Loop, for example. And that's one of the big advantages of Shot Lab. You can shoot once and then double up the effect and experiment and see how you can use it multiple times without having to reshoot everything. Have a proper scroll through the Shot Lab library when you get a chance because there really is something in there for everyone. They're not all silly gimmicks, there are genuinely some useful tools and features in there to make your videos more interesting. And then finally, once you've got comfortable with those options, then I highly recommend that you try the live edit feature. In terms of the effort involved to actually edit, this is probably the most involved of the four, but it's also the most fun. When you use the live edit feature, you suddenly realise that you're directing the camera, but after you filmed it. So it's a really interesting way to edit and it gets you used to the whole concept of how 360 shooting and editing works. To use it, go into your album and pick a clip that's at least one minute long. Tap the screen to pause it and then look for a little record icon in the bottom left corner. Tap that and you're now in the live edit view. And before you record anything, just move your phone around to understand how it works. As you tilt and spin the phone, you'll see the view move with you within that 360 sphere. Look up, look down, spin around, and you'll start to get a feel for the fact that you're standing in the middle of this captured moment. And you can pinch to zoom out and spread your fingers to zoom in. Once you're comfortable with that, tap start record. And from that moment, whatever you do with the phone is being recorded as a new normal video. So if you pan from you to your friend or tilt up to the sky, whip around behind you, all that movement is baked into the exported video. It feels odd the first time you do it because you're effectively re-filming a scene that you've already shot. But once you understand it, it's incredibly powerful. So now if you want to get a bit clever with this feature, you can look at the presets at the bottom. You've got things like selfie and forward, and when you select these, the app will analyze them first to figure out where you are and where straight ahead is in that clip. And then you have others like 360, 180 right turn, 180 left turn, and Tiny Planet. And these don't need analyzing. You can just tap those at any time once you've pressed record. So you could start your live recording in a normal forward view, tap selfie to whip the camera back to you, and then hit Tiny Planet, and then go into a big spin and the app will animate all of that smoothly for you. When you're happy, you just hit quick export and then you've got a fully edited video that you achieved just by moving your phone around and without any traditional editing at all. So that's the basic idea. You start with the really simple, almost fully automatic editing options to get some really quick wins and then gradually move on to the ones that ask for a bit more of you, but also give you a little bit more creative control as well. Auto edit and flash cut are perfect for your first few edits. Shot Lab is where you can start having fun with effects with without needing to understand editing at all. And live editing is where you take your first step to actually direct your footage.
footage, but you're directing it after you've shot it, so shoot first, frame later. If you stick to these four methods of editing in the app and ignore everything else for now, you'll avoid that feeling of being totally overwhelmed and you'll actually start to enjoy the editing process and enjoy putting together your 360 videos. Let me know which editing method is your favorite and for more 360 shooting tips, you can watch this video next and I'll see you over there.